Given a graph, there are a lot of questions we might want to ask about it. So let's take the Paris Metro example. For example, we might ask ourselves, what is the shortest route from S to T? That's something that seems really useful to know. Maybe a stranger question is, what is the longest route from S to T without cycles? We might just ask the basic question, do there exist cycles at all? So for the Paris Metro, there clearly do exist cycles, but for other type of graphs, maybe that's not so clear. How do you know when you're running it on a computer whether there are cycles? So that's an algorithm you might need to develop. Another question you might ask yourself, is there a tour you can take that uses, only, that uses each node only once? So for example, can I go from this station to every other using every station only one time? So in this graph, it turns out to be impossible. Then another question you might ask is, is there a tour that uses each edge exactly once? And again, in this case, for this graph, it is impossible to do so. However, for other generic graphs, maybe that's not the case. Maybe there are other systems. Like let's say BART, are these questions different? You, know, you might think about all these questions in the context of BART or other things that aren't even subway maps. Now what's interesting about these graph problems is they're all going to be solved using some kind of traversal, which is why we kicked off today with tree traversals. But before we start trying to solve some of these problems, I would like to introduce a much broader family of questions you might want to ask, along with their common names. So in graphs, there is, for example, a problem called the ST path problem. Does there exist a path between two vertices? This is a great way to know. Uh, for example, you're making some mapping application, and I try to get driving directions from San Francisco to Tokyo. Well, there is no path between them that involves roads, so the ST path problem is how you would determine that fact. There's the connectivity problem, which is, is a graph connected? That is, is there a way to get from every vertex to every other? Okay, so it's kind of a generalization of the ST path problem. It's just you consider all pairs of vertices. And if the answer to the ST path is yes for all vertices, then the graph is connected. Another problem is biconnectivity. Is there some vertex that if you remove it, that the graph becomes disconnected? It's basically a critical link, a bridge. And you can imagine that if you're using a graph to model maybe a, a logistics supply chain or a power distribution network, biconnectivity may be a bad feature because it means you have a single point of failure that may cause your entire system to stop working. The shortest ST path problem is pretty natural. So that's not only do I want to know if there exists a path, but I want to know what is the shortest path between two vertices. Cycle detection, does the graph have cycles? The Euler tour problem, which is, we saw it in the subway map example, is there a cycle that uses every edge exactly once? So it's a tour of the system. Uh, and the uh, related problem, the Hamilton tour, which is, is there a cycle that uses every vertex exactly once? So this is edges and this is vertex, vertices. There's planarity, which is a pretty interesting one. Can you draw the graph on paper that is two-dimensional paper with no crossing edges? Turns out there are some graphs that if you draw them on paper, no edges will cross. So for example, this graph, right? It's flat. But there are some graphs that you literally can't draw it without some of the lines crossing the others. Isomorphism. If I give you two drawings of graphs, is there some way to drag all the edges and nodes around so that they're really the same exact shape? Are two graphs isomorphic? Are they the same graph in disguise? So there's lots and lots and lots more problems than that. But I'm bringing this up because I want to start giving you the sense that this is a very deep space mathematically. Now, another thing that's really cool to me about graph problems is you often can't tell which of these problems is hard and which of them are easy without very deep consideration. Often graphs, there are these very easily stated problems that are just brutally difficult. So on that point, let's discuss the Euler tour and Hamilton tour. So it turns out that these two problems, even though they sound almost exactly the same, are vastly different in their difficulty. So for example, an efficient Euler tour algorithm that has a runtime that is linear in the number of total edges, which is as good as you could possibly do, was found as early as somewhere around 1873. But to this day, nobody knows how to find a Hamilton tour of a graph in a short amount of time. The best algorithms are exponential. And even though people have been working on this for decades, literally nobody has any idea. And in fact, if you solve the Hamilton tour problem, you would be one of the most famous people in the entire world for reasons that will become clear way later in the class. So graph problems, they are just magnificent. I mean, they're really fun. They're among the most mathematically rich. And if you thought the skill ceiling for inheritance problems or um, 
for runtime analysis problems was high. I mean, graphs way off the charts. We could do problems, as I just said, that I mean, you will win every math award that ever was if you were to solve the Hamilton to our problem. So what we'll see is that the solutions to these problems inherently involve a lot of traversals. And so in the next video, we'll get a flavor for how that is by talking about something known as depth first traversal.